Hello once again everyone and welcome back to Let's Beat the Dead Horse named Let's Create. As you can see by the title, this isn't actually Let's Create a Mario style platformer part 4. And I do apologize, but I decided that while I've spent so much time away from the channel, I should attempt to push my way back for the incredibly supportive community that you've been to me. So, for today I've come with a filler episode. One of the biggest walls I've had flashbacks of running headfirst into has been fully grasping the concept of event-based programming languages when not everything has been explained to you in full detail. There's a certain level of expectation I put forth in my first few videos that I now realize was very careless and unthoughtful of me for those young, dashing, aspiring programmers looking to the field for their very first time. Of all the troubles we could run into, it's variables that I feel most of us, myself included, have struggled with in my previous videos. At some point in our past, someone has probably mentioned programming to you in the form of zeros and ones. As an English translation, most code was written as false or true questions and statements. Even today, this method of programming is still pretty standard in almost all fields, especially in programming languages that are event-driven, or otherwise known as trigger languages. Now, a trigger language doesn't refer to the firing of an armed weapon, though if you meet the right person, you'll wish it did. Instead of first the act of letting the computer wait for the user to do something. This something is best described as user input. When the computer then recognizes from the code that the user's input was defined, it runs through a series of events that the programmer told it to. The computer's response to the user's input is known as output. Thus, event-driven languages are often called I.O. languages, which is short for input-output. In GameMaker language, or GML for short, Almost all of what you do is going to be trigger-based events. To demonstrate an example, let's reference our Mario-style platformer code in a new project. So create a new project, and go ahead and create a little sprite for your player. Anything from actual talent to a blue square will be accepted here. Then create an object associated with it and call it obj underscore player. Let's add a create event for our object player, and with it an execute code script. Go ahead and we'll create the variable hispa, setting it equal to zero. Now, we're going to exit the script, and we'll add a step-step event, creating another code event. So, what we're going to be looking at in this code event is the basis of programming in event-driven programming. In our Mario-style platformer, we created a few variables for movement. The ones I'm going to look at today are key left and key right, both with an underscore as a space. These are both custom variables. They are not tied to anything in the GML presets. What these variables do is they store a value for us that we can change at any given time. Think of a variable like a box. We can store numbers, letters, or sentences in our box, and take them out at any given time to play with. We can also add to our box without removing what's currently in it. Let's say we decide to put a number in our box. It could be 0, 1, 99, 72, 3.14, or whatever else you may need. Number values are in that do not contain a decimal are known as ints, or integers, while numbers that do have a decimal are known as floats. One example of an integer could be the speed at which our player is moving. An example of a float could be the mathematical value of pi. We could also make it a word or a sentence. We could say, hello world, in quotes. When we make it a value that is surrounded by quotes, it's known as a string. One example of the use of a string could be for changing the text written in RPG text boxes. So let's get back to the variables we have here, key underscore left and key underscore right. Currently, they are undefined, which are variables that often return errors from the computer as they have no value. So let's give them each a value. We're going to set them both to key press events from GameMaker's built-in functions. Let's set key left to keyboard underscore check underscore direct, the word ORD in there, and then in the brackets of ORD, put in quotations the letter A. You go ahead and end that one with a semicolon, and move on to key underscore right, setting it to keyboard check direct again, only this time making an ORD with the letter D in there. If we recall back to what I said earlier, at some point in our past, someone has probably mentioned programming to you in the form of zeros and ones. As an English translation, most code was written as false or true questions and statements we can see that most of event-based programming is true or false questions and statements. When we ask the computer a question, we're asking if one value, usually a variable, is equal to, not equal to, greater than, or less than another value. The advantage of GML's keyboard check direct function 
is that it sets whatever called it to true while the key is being pressed, but it sets it to false while it's not being pressed. So let's write out our code now. We can write if key underscore left, open it up with a curly bracket, and within this curly bracket, we're telling the computer that so long as that returns true, then we can perform the events within this curly bracket and the closing curly bracket we'll be placing later. In this case, we're gonna write hispa equals negative two. We can then put a closing curly bracket and follow the same steps with key underscore right. Only in this one, put hispa equals two. Similarly, we can also check if a variable is not true and if one or more variables are true or not. Let's tell the computer we want the player to stop moving when neither movement key or both keys are being pressed. Here we can ask an if question, and within one of the set of brackets, write an exclamation point, key underscore left. Follow that with a double ampersand, or otherwise known as the double and symbol, and then an exclamation point, key underscore right. Follow that by the closing bracket. The use of the exclamation point is telling the computer we want the variable to not be true, so you can think of the exclamation point as the word not. The double ampersand tells the computer that we want both of these things to return the value that we want at the same time, otherwise the brackets will return false regardless. Let's also ask or if both keys are being pressed at the same time. This can be done with a double vertical line, which stands for the word or. With a new set of brackets, we'll write key underscore left, double ampersand, and key underscore right. Now, within the curly brackets of the if question, we can write hispa equals zero. What this means is that if the first brackets return false, but the second brackets return true, the computer can still perform the events we have written. It works vice versa as well. However, they both cannot be true or false at the same time. Now, simply by using x, a built-in GameMaker variable that allows you to set the x coordinate position on GameMaker's grid for the object, and adding the value of hispa to it every frame, we can move the player left and right, and also stop him if we try and press both the left and right keys at the same time, or neither key. If you create a room and test out your game, you'll see that that's exactly what happens. Well, I hope this tutorial has helped those who are very confused by the introduction to programming and understanding the most important core concepts of trigger-based languages. While more filler may come before Mario Style Platformer 2, I hope to continue creating episodes that both experienced developers new to GameMaker and new programmers introduced to the functionality and power of GameMaker's development suite. But for now, this is Pixel, signing off.